Irish Prime Minister John Bruton live from Dublin. So good evening to you, Mr Bruton. I mean, Giva Hofstadt essentially saying that uh, Northern Ireland must remain within the single market. I mean, that's probably good news for Dublin, but the UK is never going to accept that, are they? Well, when the British people had the referendum, they decided to leave the European Union, but they were not asked the supplementary question, do you want to rule out the Norway option whereby you could continue to be in the single market without being a member of the European Union? And they weren't asked to rule out being in the customs union either, uh, which Turkey is in, although it's not a member of the European Union. These options were closed off after the referendum by the Prime Minister at a Conservative Party conference about 13 months ago. Now, that decision of the Prime Minister is what's causing the problem today, because that decision, not leaving the EU, but ruling out the customs union and the single market, is what creates the possibility of having to have border controls in Ireland on 300 cross-border roads, huge numbers of traffic, amounts of traffic crossing that border every day, which would be disrupted if, as a result of those decisions of Theresa May, we had to introduce a hard border. Are you saying then that, uh, I mean, given that the people of Northern Ireland actually voted to remain in the EU, do you think they should get a vote on whether they should remain within the single market? Well, that's a possibility, but I, I, I don't think we in Ireland are particularly looking to divide Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK. That's a matter to be decided in, other fa in, a, in another fashion. What we would prefer, and certainly what I would prefer, would be if Britain would stay on in the customs union and stay on in the single market, because Britain is leaving the customs union, it says, because it wants to do trade deals. But by giving up the customs union, it is losing 59 trade deals that it has benefited from that the EU has made with other countries, and it is losing access to the EU market and including Ireland. These are all markets close to Britain that it's giving up for the possibility of making trade deals with Venezuela or Argentina or somewhere like that, which is much further away and not likely to be as profitable a market as the market that the Britain, Britain is giving up. Mark, but the point is that uh, the Leave campaign said Britain needed to be able to take control and there's no opportunity to cut bilateral trade deals as part of the single market, is there? Well, Britain has control at the moment as a member of the European Union on EU policies. They have a substantial vote in EU policies. If Britain wants to leave the EU, obviously it ceases to have that vote. Um, but lots of things that were, were said in the referendum that have not turned out to be true. And I think the British people are entitled to have another look at this issue at, at some stage and to consider whether or not the decisions that were taken after the referendum, not by the people, but by the Prime Minister, to leave the customs union and leave the single market ought to be re-examined. Uh, obviously, if those decisions are confirmed, that creates a problem as to where you would have the controls. Would you have them on the border in Ireland, which is a very long border with lots of crossings, creating huge opportunities for smuggling, creating all sorts of difficulties? Or would you have them at the sea boundary between the island of Ireland and Britain? Now, there are big downsides with both of those. Yes. Big practical downsides with having the border controls along the land border and big political, understandable political difficulties with the other option. Now, the current Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, has uh, threatened to veto any deal if, the, uh, if he's unsatisfied with the kind of uh, agreement that Ireland gets out of all this. Isn't the UK government, given its financial support of Ireland post the financial crisis, entitled to a bit more help from him? Well, this is a vital national interest for Ireland, not just in terms of the interests of the Irish Republic. And the Irish Republic is going to be damaged hugely by the British decision to leave the European Union, a decision in which we had no part because our exports go to the rest of the world, 80% of them, through Britain to other destinations. And that's going to be substantially disrupted by a British decision in which we have no part. But the other big issue is, of course, the Good Friday Agreement, which assumes an open boundary between the two parts of Ireland. The isolation of the nationalist community that would arise as a result of a hard border being installed, the isolation of the nationalist community in Northern Ireland that would result from that would be politically extremely damaging and would under, undermine the sort of consensus 
for peace that has been created by the Good Friday Agreement as a result of so much work by British and Irish politicians. Uh, very briefly, in a, in a word, do you think talks will move on to phase two and talk and trade in December? It all depends on what the British government comes forward with in terms of how they're going to deal with this issue of uh, the boundary between the UK and Ireland. All right, John Bruton, we've got to leave it there. Thank you for joining me. Good to see you.